Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now, just in case if you're new here, my name is Dave. May the Schwartz be with you. And this is something different. Videos like this, I like to go a little bit off topic and just chat about something a little different than what we normally cover, which is watches. But again, for my watch guys out there, let's go ahead and do a wristwatch check. This is my Volvo watch. I picked this up used online. I think I paid like 10 bucks for it. Uh, it was just a cheap little Volvo for life watch. Um, the strap that it came on, I didn't really care for, so I threw it on this black leather racing strap that has red stitching. And I will do a full review on this watch in the future for you guys. Now in today's video, I'm gonna share with you what my experience has been within regard to both the cost to maintain and to repair a Volvo S60. And when I was getting ready to purchase my 2013 Volvo S60 T6R design, I was kind of researching what the overall cost to maintain the car was going to be, but I really couldn't find any definitive videos or charts explaining the cost, anything with a breakdown. So now that I've owned the car and my wife and I have put a number of miles on the vehicle, I will share with you what I've paid. Now hopefully this will help out some of you out there looking for the actual cost of what it's gonna to take to maintain a used uh, luxury car like Volvo. Now, if this does end up helping, please be sure to like and comment down below. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, I first wanna say I did buy this car used. And I have no way of knowing what the previous owner did before me with the car or how well they did or did not maintain it. Now, if you're looking to buy a used vehicle, especially a used luxury vehicle, there's a good chance you may be purchasing the car out of warranty. And so you may need to make that decision yourself in regards to if you would purchase an extended warranty protection or extended vehicle protection plan, something like that. Um, a policy that's basically an insurance for any maintenance that comes up on the vehicle. That's not really something I can advise you on personally because they range both in price and there's a lot of options as far as deductibles and it's a gamble between something happening to your car and a set period of time versus if you had just set that money aside and use it as an emergency fund for your car in case there was any unplanned repairs uh, that may come up. So you're gonna have to make that decision on what it is for you. Um, for my wife and I, we decided not having any experience with the Volvo, we decided to just go ahead and buy a um, extended warranty type of plan and I'll get into that a little bit more for you. Okay, so this here is all of my records and everything on the Volvo S60 that I have. Um, I don't want to do close-ups because obviously it has too much information on the on there that I'm not willing to share. Um, and I don't want to mark up and cover all my, my paperwork. Um, but just to kind of show you on average the cost for a um, just a simple oil change ranges. The higher end is about 140, 139. And for the cheaper, like if there's service specials or some savings, can be about 118, 120. So we'll just say between 120 and 140 is gonna be the cost of what we're looking at for an oil change. Now that doesn't include any tire rotations. I actually buy my tires through Discount Tire and they do uh, free tire rotations when you buy your tires through them. So one of the things that I have also done in the time that I've owned the Volvo is replace the battery. So the owner before me put a cheap battery, which makes me think, I don't know what maintenance they did, if any. So that wasn't a good feeling seeing that cheap battery in there, but I took it to Volvo. And the main reason being is I didn't want to wait around. The guy was like, uh, when I had roadside come out to uh, jump the car again, so I could drive to Volvo, the guy was like, well, we can replace the battery. And I said, okay, how much? Um, He's like, maybe like 200, uh, but it'll be the same brand. And I'm like, no, dude, like I just complained to you about this battery being crap and you want to put the same same brand battery in? Like, come on. So I told him, no, thank you. <laughs> um, so I drove it to Volvo, had them take care of it, and the battery itself came out to, and this is with a discount, uh, $314. It would have been a little bit more. Uh, the battery was 250 so labor was 70 just to give you a breakdown there and then with discounts and everything tax but i will say the cool thing about the battery from volvo is that if it dies within a year or craps out and it explodes whatever happens they replace it for free and every year after up to i think five years they prorate it so if it needs to be replaced in two or three years then they prorate some of that which is good to extra peace of mind so you know you're getting some of your money back there 
um, which is cool. So I did like that. Now, one of the things that did come up on my vehicle was I noticed when I would be at lower speeds, um, I would hear kind of like a metal knocking sound whenever I hit certain dips and bumps, speed bumps, stuff like that. So I took it into Volvo, had them take a look at it and found out that they needed to replace the engine pad, two engine pads, those are like your motor mounts and a torque rod. Um, now, because I have the extended warranty, all I had to pay out of pocket was $500. It was much more than that, but they never gave me a breakdown with the cost of what it would have cost completely out of pocket. So they did replace all of that, it took a while, um, ended up getting the uh, repair done, but $500 out of pocket there for that. The warranty covered the rest. Um, another repair that needed to be done was I did get a check engine light that came on. Uh, the code was P240200. So instead of Volvo, I took this to a local repair shop that works on European cars, um, had some recommendations from other people. So I wanted to check them out, told them what was going on and basically told them, look, find as much as you can because my deductible is 500 with my extended warranty. But if we can address multiple issues, I'd much rather just pay my one deductible. And so they kind of understood, all right, let's take a look. Let's see everything we can find. And this is what they replaced or fixed. Um, I also noticed, so two things were being done, the check engine light and on my air conditioner, whenever I turned it on with the AC on, it would make certain noises. And then when I hit the AC button, the noise would go away. So turning the air conditioner on and off produced that sound. And I didn't know what it was. The AC worked, but it was making a sound. So telling me something's eventually going to go out. Um, they checked it out and here's what we got. So the air conditioner repair was an AC solenoid, AC hose, AC valve cores. Um, we had a leak, leak detection pump that was bad, so they replaced that. Um, we also had the rear shocks replaced, the shock absorbers and support plates, and the oil breather trap was also replaced. All in all, again, my $500 deductible, but I got a discount. I only had to pay $426. <laughs> they did all of the repairs and it came out to what would have cost out of pocket $2,329. And so because I didn't have to pay that, I came out ahead, of course, with that extended warranty. So that kind of pushed me over the top there. Um, now in the town that I live in, our streets, some of the streets here are absolute garbage and will wreck your suspension <laughs> if you drive on them too fast or too much. And so what I ended up doing was an alignment. It was, it was out of alignment pretty bad. And so I don't want to constantly be going through a set of tires all the time. I had the alignment done. That was $160. So $150 plus tax um, to have the alignment done for the all-wheel drive. There you go. Cool. Now, if you're buying a used Volvo, this may come up. You, when you get higher in the mileage, over 50K, before 100K, somewhere around there, um, Volvo told me that what they recommended, this is the dealership saying this, is that even though the transmission has a lifetime fluid, I mean, is there really anything that is lifetime? So since it's a lifetime fluid, but that my car was reaching a point where they recommend if you're going to replace a fluid, do it now because after a set point, I think 80K, 90K, somewhere around there, um, they recommend that you don't replace the fluid because it can cause more problems with slipping. So they told me, if you want to do it, we recommend you do it now. Otherwise, if you're not, then don't mess with it later. I told him, let's do it because I personally would like to have that replaced and changed out. At least most of the fluid replaced, maybe not all of it for whatever grit that's in there. So with the oil change and the fluid flush, we're looking at $470. So that was done. Now brakes, normal wear and tear. So something again, buying used vehicle, you're going to have to replace the brakes at some point in time. And depending on what mileage you're at, it could be likely that it's your turn to replace. That cost is being passed to you as the new owner. <laughs> um, so I can do the front brakes myself. And I did. I bought a set of R1 concepts, replaced the front rotors and pads. No problem. The rear brakes, however, I was not willing to take that project on myself because it has an electronic parking brake. Just I watched the how to and, it, and I don't have the tools. I don't have all the electronic stuff to do it um, the correct way. And I didn't want to risk it. Now, Volvo was going to charge me over $600. I think almost close to 700. And that was for rotors and pads. And I took it to this uh, same shop that I mentioned earlier and got the rear 
pads and rotors replaced for 575. So rear brake job, almost $600. So the 70,000 maintenance was a tune-up. Um, so we're replacing again, doing the oil change. We're also getting the, um, what is this here? Spark plugs replaced. Now mine is an inline six cylinder. So getting that done on the Volvo was a grand total with the oil change of 518. And they give me a discount. It would have been 554, saved 10% uh, or whatever. So with taxes and everything came out to 518. Um, so again, one of those scheduled maintenances, like you're looking at like 500 bucks with the oil change. So the 60K servicing on the R design that ran $396, almost 400 there. Um, when you get to, when you get a little bit higher in the mileage, my personal opinion is look and see what the servicing requires because you may be able to do some of that yourself and not spend $400. Just get the oil change. Um, and then if you can replace the engine air filter, do that yourself. If you can replace the cabin air filter, do that yourself. All those little things that you can do on your own will save you a ton of money instead of at the dealership. And that's kind of where I'm at now with my car. I take it in there, just do a little change, please. Um, once we get to, I forget if it's 100 or 115, 110, 120, somewhere around there, there's a big maintenance. Um, and so I'll have them do that. I think I need to have the power steering flush, something like that. So that's gonna be kind of expensive, but anything that I can do on my own, I will do. So I wouldn't look at it as, hey, am I coming out ahead? Have I spent X amount total on the maintenance? That's not really how I look at taking care of my cars. I just know that's an expense that's part of owning a car. And when you own a luxury car like this, the expense is gonna be higher. So this video, I definitely want to drive that point home. If you wanna own a luxury car, definitely be prepared to spend more than you would with a vehicle that costs less. It's just how it is. I really hope that this video helps people out there with making their decision. And though, although the costs are high, I do have to take a moment and say that I really do enjoy my Volvo S60. The peace of mind with regards to its safety features and the ratings are a big part of the reason that I went with it. And that paired with its super luxurious features, safety options, and understated design, it's just a car that doesn't turn heads from police. It doesn't stand out in a, a parking lot in the bad, bad side of town or anything like that but it's an absolute beast. It's got over 350 horsepower. It's got the Polestar chip upgrade, all wheel drive with torque vectoring. It's just a, a fun car to drive. It allows for some really amazing handling and spirited driving. Me personally, if I have to spend a few extra hundred here and there as a trade-off, I'm okay with that. So that's just something that you'll have to decide if it's worth it for you. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you have had similar experiences or costs for your Volvo, definitely let us know in the comments. I'm sure there's other people out there that are shopping for a Volvo or have owned one and kind of want to know what they're getting into. And so I know your comments would help them out a ton as well. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, please consider joining the Schwartz Force. Hit the subscribe button down below, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will look forward to seeing you guys at the next one. All right, take care.